Will you please stand as you're able and face the cross? The confession and forgiveness is printed in the bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man, a Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and the Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of <clears throat> Thyatira, got it, <laughs> and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home and she prevailed upon us. After leaving the prison, they went to Lydia's home, and where they had seen and encouraged the brothers and sisters there, they departed. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 31, found in your bulletin. We'll sing five verses. reading from 1 Peter. Like a newborn infant, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
for it stands in scriptures. See, I'm laying in Zion, Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobeyed the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. The Alleluia verse is 151 in your hymnal. Will you please stand? is the Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace is yours and so is peace from God our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It was 13 years ago that Pastor Ben and I toured the Holy Land. Part of our tour was dedicated to the holy stones of our faith, the places where Jesus had lived and taught and preached. And on top of those places, um, th there were ancient ruins that we could tour, and then there was almost always a church perched on top of the ancient ruins. We were often struck by the holiness of these places and by what they represent to our faith. The, the birthplace of Jesus, the place where he preached the Beatitudes, the synagogue at Capernaum where he taught and the shore where he called his first disciples. These holy stones 
make the Gospels come alive for us. And they brought Jesus to us in a very real way. We saw those holy stones in the Holy Land, but we also met living stones. Part of our agenda was to meet and understand people who live there now, people who continue the ancient struggle of land possession and rights between Israelis and Palestinians in the place where peace is so elusive. We met Maya, an Israeli Jew, working with other Israelis against house demolition. She took us on a tour of areas where Palestinian homes had been demolished to build illegal Israeli settlements. We also met Jahara, a Palestinian Christian working for the Palestinian Initiative for the Promotion of Global Dialogue and Democracy. But their concern is to get the Palestinian viewpoint out to the world. Not just a bunch of Palestinian terrorists, but what is it these Palestinians are about? We met Rachel, who is from the United States. She volunteers with peacekeeping organizations in Palestine, leaving behind the comforts of her home here in America for repeat tours of duty in this troubled and dangerous area of the world. As I reread their stories in my journal, I wondered if we could place ourselves with, in the lives of any of these women and doing what they do in such a bold way. They are definitely bold women. They are living stones working for justice and peace. Living stones. That's the image that Peter lays before us today. As living stones, he says, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. It's such a beautiful image for us on Bold Women Sunday, isn't it? It's like the two images go hand in hand, living stones and bold women, those who bring faith alive for those around them, those who bring Jesus to others in a very real way. Take a look at the bold woman in our first lesson today, Lydia. I don't think she ever comes up in our regular liturgical cycle, but what an icon of faith. Lydia is credited with being the first European convert to Christianity. In a day and time when women had no status and no power, Lydia goes boldly outside of tradition. She is from Thyatira. I told you that just because that's how I was going to pronounce it. She's from Thyatira, a, a region known for making purple dye, which is the color worn only by the rich and by the royal because it is so expensive. She is an independent woman in charge of her own household. And she has moved from Thyatira to Philippi, a distance of about 240 miles, a long way from her home, from the middle of Turkey over to eastern Greece. And she and other women had gathered at the river to pray and to worship. And Paul and his companions showed up there to see who was there and to talk to them. Lydia heard this new gospel of Jesus, and she stepped up to be baptized along with her whole family. The first person on, in Europe to be baptized and to embrace the gospel. And then she offered the missionaries a place to stay. They must have taken her up on it because a few verses later, after they've had a few adventures in the area, they went back to her house to say goodbye to all of the faithful church that was gathered there. Did you hear that? Her home was one of the worship centers of the early church. Now that's a bold move, isn't it? Right after you've been baptized. <laughs> she was so important to the Christians that this place on the river is commemorated with a beautiful chapel decorated with brilliant mosaics, a lot of flashing gold. When I visited Greece and Turkey a few years ago, we stopped at this place for a Bible study on Lydia, and we walked on the road that Paul would have actually walked from, the place where his ship landed in Macedonia up to Philippi. It was a very moving and holy moment. 
holy stones once again meeting living stones to enrich our faith. Back then, I couldn't have known that my very own granddaughter would bear the name of this saintly woman. Living stones from past to present, right? Carrying on that legacy and bringing Jesus to others in a very real way. Lydia hosted a church in her home. In the earliest days of the church, there weren't any buildings that were called church. The word church referred to the people. One of the earliest church fathers, Hippolytus, wrote this in the year 230 AD. Hippolytus said, it is not a place that is called the church, nor a house made of stones and earth. What then is the church? It is the holy assembly of those who live in righteousness. Hippolytus said it early on, but it's something that we reiterate today. Living stones, loose in the world with a strong gospel message of Jesus Christ, that's the church. A song that was taught at a youth gathering a number of years ago said, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together, all who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And it goes on to say the church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is people. Written by Avery and Marsh, a prolific Christian songwriting team of the 1970s and 1980s, if you went to a youth gathering back then, you might remember that song. But we're, there's a different image, I think, that we all know that's had a little change today, too. Have you ever done this? Oh. Do it with me. Here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the doors. See all the people, right? Here we are. But there's another way of doing that now. It goes like this. Here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the door. Where are the people? They're out in the world being the church. <laughs> we come into the church, but we go out from the church. That's what living stones are all about. We don't just stay here with, and keep this message to ourselves. We go rolling out into the world so that we can share the message of Jesus Christ and bring Jesus to others in a very real way. Living stones are not just in the church. Living stones are living their faith out in the world. Living stones, bold women, bearing the faith out into the world and touching the lives of others who can then be living stones, bringing their faith out into the world. It just goes on and on and on. Who are the living stones, bold women, who have touched you? Why do you come here to worship on a regular basis? Who taught you the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Liturgy? Who modeled a faithful life to you? Who encouraged you to use your gifts for the good and the honorable and the faithful? Those are the women that we highlight today. Helen did a great job about telling us so many ministries that we have going on right here in the church with our bold women. And I want to tell you, too, one of the highlights for us when we went to the Holy Land 13 years ago was walking into one of the Christian churches there, and we saw a big stack of Lutheran World Relief boxes filled with quilts. <laughs> and we were so happy and we were so proud. Everybody in our group said, oh, our church does that. <laughs> they really do get to other places in the world and they really do get used by people there and get distributed there. It was one of the highlights of the, church, of the trip for us because that's what we do. The living stones, the bold women who work here so that they can go out into the world and bring the message of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you about a bold woman in our family. She was my grandmother, my dad's mom. Her name was Edna Ringbaum Balm Anderson. Her parents came to New York from Sweden. She married Julius Balm and had five children, one of whom died in adolescence. Grandpa Julius died when my dad was just 
13 years old. Grandma gave piano and organ lessons which sustained her and her remaining children. But listen to this. Grandma was the organist at her church in Tonawanda, New York for 60 years. Six, zero, 60 years. She planned worship, picked hymns, directed the choir. Her kids remember stories from when they were little, they had to sit where she could see them from the organ bench. <laughs> you might know what that means. <laughs> One of her daughters became the organist at her church in Holland, New York. Two of her sons, my dad and Uncle Russ, both became Lutheran pastors. And her granddaughter, me, became a Lutheran pastor. And her great-grandson, Ben, became a Lutheran pastor, carrying on the legacy of this bold woman who taught her kids, who taught their kids, who taught our kids what it means to believe in Jesus Christ and to carry that out into the message so that Jesus will come to others in a very real way. Pretty mar remarkable from one living stone, one bold women. I want to remember Grandma Anderson on this Bold Women Sunday. We don't all have to be pastors, you know. There's lots of ways <laughs> to be bold women and to learn from bold women. Who do you think of? Who is it who encourages you to be a living stone, to bring Jesus to others in a real way? Through baptism, each one of us is connected to Christ, the cornerstone. He has laid the foundation, and we are called to be living stones, whether we're inside the church or outside the church. No matter our color, our size, our shape, there is a place for each one of us to carry our faith boldly into the world. Peter's talking about living stones, but those living stones are not the church building, not the bricks and mortar that make up the structure. He means that we bring the church alive wherever these living stones go. We are the church, even when we're not in the church. So remember our little church with the steeple and all the people are out in the world. That's how these living stones operate. We ask the question today, who are the living stones, the bold women, who shaped you in faith and encouraged you to live that faith in the world? And then, how do you carry that legacy forward? You are the living stones of today. Amen. We join now in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the prayers today, the people's response after each hear us, O God, is, your mercy is great. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of life, strengthen your church to proclaim your gospel, even in times of trouble. As we remember Stephen, we give thanks for diaconal ministry. Bless all deacons and strengthen them for their bridge-building ministry between church and world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. <laughs> Creating God, you show your steadfast love through mighty waters, towering mountains, verdant fields, and the deserts. Protect the Earth's diverse habitats from forces of pollution, erosion, extinction, and global warming. 
Hear us, O God. Mighty God, your spirit guides your spirit guides us into all truth. Give wisdom to the world and local leaders and organizations as they begin, build, or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders and organizations in area, areas needing to be rebuilt following conflict, unrest, or natural disaster. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, with those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all who question if there is a home in your heart. We pray for all who are sick or in need of your healing touch, especially Jamie, Karen, Melba, Marlene, Ray, Logan, Al, Tykes, Tyra, Chuck, Dottie, Brooklyn, Trudy, Lori, Jace, Rebecca, Dan, Ray, Donna, Jesse, Dixie, and Bob. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Assuring God, you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. Uphold people in this community who have recently moved, changed jobs or schools, retired, or are going through transitions of any kind. Lead us in your ways. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. great. Renewing God, you gather the saints at your heavenly banquet. We give you thanks for the care shown us by those who have gone before us. Grant confidence and comfort for all awaiting the place you have prepared. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And Please share a sign of peace with one another. want to thank you for the many ways that you share your gifts, that you are the living stones of this church gathering for worship and bringing your gifts here, going out into the world and sharing your gifts. We thank you so much for the many ways that you give to this church and offer yourselves to God's service. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. joy 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Lord Jesus also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news.